Today we're going to learn about properties of inequality. So we know what the properties of equality are. We're going to learn about the properties of equality. Page 44, two learning targets today. The first one is to apply the properties of inequality to rearrange an inequality so its solution set is revealed. So it's a very long way of saying solve inequalities. The second learning target today is to identify the key difference between properties of equality and inequality. So there's a key difference that you'll have to know as we go through the lesson. Okay, the first, addition property of inequality is the same as the addition property of equality. Um, the only difference is the sign, right? So if A is greater than B, then we can add C to both A and B, and the result is a inequality that is equivalent. So we are not changing the solution set because we're pr producing an inequality that is equivalent to the original inequality. And then the same is true if the sign was less than. Um, if we add the same number of both sides, then we get an inequality that is equivalent. So we can essentially add anything we want as long as we're adding it to both sides. Subtraction property of inequality, no change here. If A is greater than B, then we can subtract C from both A and C from both B. So we can essentially subtract any number we want um, to both the expressions that make up the inequality, whether it's a greater than or a less than symbol that separates the two expressions. So no change between these two properties. Here's where we begin to see the change. So the multiplication property of equality. If A is greater than B and C is positive, then we can multiply C to both the left expression and the right expression. So the key difference here is with the multiplication property of inequality, we're only allowed to multiply right now positive numbers to both sides of the inequality. Positive numbers, no matter if it's a less than or a greater than. And just like big sister um, division property of equality, we can divide both sides of the inequality or both expressions of the inequality by the same value as long as that value is positive. So C is positive, we can divide C to A and C to B. And the same is true for when we have a less than. So essentially these properties are all the same except the only difference here is we are dividing and multiplying only positive numbers for the time being. So the question becomes, what about dividing and multiplying negative numbers? So there's a special rule for when we multiply or divide both expressions by a negative. And the definition for that rule is, if A is greater than B and C is negative, then A times C is less than B times C. Or if we're uh, dividing both sides by a negative value, a divided by C is less than B divided by C. So it's very subtle, but hopefully you see it. When we divide by negative, we have to switch the direction of the sign. So you can see A was greater than B, but when we multiply both expressions by a negative value, we need to change the direction of the sign or flip the sign. So now the A expression is less than the B expression because we multiplied by a negative. So the takeaway is flip the sign of the inequality when you multiply or divide by a negative, by, not two. So it doesn't matter if I'm, you know, if, we, if the inequality is 5x is greater than 10, uh, negative 10, if I'm dividing both sides by five, I do not need to flip the sign because I'm not dividing by a negative. I might be dividing to a negative. I'm dividing to a negative number but I'm not dividing by a negative number, I'm dividing by a positive number, right? If I was dividing by negative five, however, so if it was negative five X, and I was dividing it to a negative 10, then I would have to flip the sign after I simplified here. I'd have one X, I'd flip the sign, equals positive two. So when I divide by a negative, that's when the sign flips, and I know for a fact that you're going to forget this, so I'm gonna Go ahead and just tell you now, you will forget this at some point. Every student that I've ever had is forgotten. So try to be the student that does not forget this critical rule here. When you divide by a negative or multiply by a negative, you need to flip the sign. Okay, our first example we have, solve the inequality for x, and the inequality here is negative 20 is 
greater than or equal to x divided by 20. So we're going to go ahead and solve so that x is by itself. The first thing that we're going to do is declare number side and variable side. So number side, obviously, the side that doesn't have a variable if the inequality doesn't have a variable on both sides. And the variable side, obviously, the side that has a variable. So now we want to start simplifying. There's nothing to simplify here. There's nothing to simplify here. So we can go ahead and start solving. We need to get rid of the number on the variable side. The number is being divided to the variable. So we need to do the inverse, which would be to multiply. And the number we're going to multiply is 20. So we're going to multiply 20 to the left side, or the left expression. And then we're going to multiply 20 to the right expression. We can write it like this. 20x plus 20. So you can see clearly I've multiplied it to both sides. Now we can go ahead and simplify. Now because we multiply by a positive number, the sign is going to stay the same direction. So it's going to be a greater than or equal to. So 20 times negative 20 is negative 400. 20 divided by 20 is 1x. And now we can further use the multiple, multiplicative identity to write this as just x instead of 1x. x is less than or equal to negative 400. So our fourth step is to write it in set notation. And in set notation, we always write the variable first. So the variable in the inequality is x, and we always write the variable first. We just solved it, and the variable is not written first. So in order to write the variable in set notation, we're going to have to read backwards and write. So like we're learning um, to read from right to left, read backwards and then write. This is the strategy. We can write this inequality two ways. We can write it the way that it is written right now. Negative 400 is greater than or equal to x. Or we can read it from right to left and write it as x is less than or equal to negative 400. So these two things are the same exact thing, except they're just written in a different way. So this is how we have to write it in set notation with the variable first. The inequality 19 is less than 16 minus x. We know that our variable side is going to be the side that does not have, or that has the variable, and our number side obviously has the number. Now we can go ahead and eliminate the number on the variable side, the number is 16. We need to get 16 to 0, so we need to subtract 16. So 19 minus 16 is less than 16 minus 16 minus x. So I've subtracted 16 to both sides. Now I can simplify. 3 is less than negative x. Now we're almost done, except we've got this negative number, or this negative sign. We know that it's actually a negative 1, so we need to divide by negative 1. So we're going to divide 3 divided by negative 1 is less than negative x divided by negative 1. Now, I've just divided by a negative. And the rule is, when you divide by negative, you must switch the sign. So I'm going to switch the direction of the sign. Now it is going to eat the left expression. And I can simplify 3 divided by negative 1 is 3. And x divided by negative 1 is just x. And here is our inequality. Write it in set notation. x is, and it's pointed at the x, so it's less than negative 3. I have not changed anything. I've just written it differently. Second example, use the properties of inequality to reveal the solution set given the inequality. So given this inequality, let's use the properties to rewrite it so that it's x and then some inequality sign and some number. Provide the answer in set notation. So our first step is to declare number side and variable side. And when we're looking here, there's only one variable expression, so it makes sense that we make that the variable side and the other expression the number side. Okay, now I'm going to look to simplify. So if I'm looking at this expression here, it looks like there's something that I can distribute. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute the 3 to the negative 4 and the negative 6. Is greater than negative 108. And what did we just do? We just distributed so we can cite distributive property. Now I'm going to look to see, is there anything more that I can simplify before we begin to solve? Well, yes, there is, because there's like terms on this side. We've got a negative 18x and a 6x. These are like terms, so we can simplify those by combining them. 
So we've got negative 12 and then negative 18 and 6 combine to a negative 12. X is greater than negative 108. We just simplified. Now there's two numbers on the variable side. Which number am I going to get rid of first? The, the easiest one is the number that's not connected to the variable through multiplication. So this one out here, negative 12 or minus 12, we need to add 12 to get it to 0. So we're going to go ahead and add 12 to both sides. So we have negative 12 plus 12 minus 12x is greater than negative 108 plus 12. Good, now we can go ahead and simplify the 12 that we just added. So we need to simplify, right? We simplify negative 12 and 12 to 0. Minus 12x is greater than negative 108 plus 12 simplifies to a negative 96. And we can use the additive identity to rewrite this without the 0. So some property, we simplify some identity. This has been the strategy that we've been using with equations and it remains the same with inequalities. Whoops, negative 96. Now we need to get rid of the last number on the variable side. That number is being multiplied, so we need to divide both sides by negative 12. So negative 12x divided by negative 12. Negative 96 divided by a negative 12. Why can we do this? Because the division property of inequality and you noticed hopefully already that we're dividing both sides by a negative value and since we are dividing by a negative we need to flip the sign or the direction of the sign so the sign is eating the left expression we need to change it so that it's eating the right expression why am I using yellow there we go now we can go ahead and simplify so we know that negative 12 divided by negative 12 is 1 and we know that negative 96 divided by negative 12 is a positive 6. And our last step is to rewrite this without the 1 being multiplied because we don't want to write it with the 1 being multiplied. So it's the multiplicative identity. And put it in set notation. And the variable is already on the left side, so we don't need to do anything here except just transfer it over in our brackets, our curly brackets. Good, and here's our answer. So the process is the same, except when we divide by negative, we've got to make sure that we flip the sign, and you can see clearly I changed it when I divide by negative. Last example for this video, we've got negative 8x plus 8 is less than negative 7 times x, 7x minus 7. So we've got variable expression on the left side, variable expression on the right side, so I need to declare what side I'm going to keep the variable on. I'm going to make this side my variable side. I'm going to make this side my number side. You can do the opposite if you would like. Now I'm going to go ahead and simplify if there's anything to simplify. Nothing on the left. However, on the right, there's some things that we can distribute. So I'm going to go ahead and distribute those things. When I do that, I get a negative 49x. Negative times a negative is a positive. Classic mistake when you leave that as a negative. Negative 49 or positive 49 is greater than negative 8x plus 8. Now we can go ahead and start solving. There's nothing further we can simplify. So when we have variable expression on both sides, the strategy is to eliminate the variable right away on the number side. So we want to get rid of the negative 49x. So we need to add 49x to both sides. So I've added 49x to both sides. Now we know it's time to simplify. Negative 8 and 49 simplify to 41x. Negative 49 and 49 simplify to 0. Now we use the additive identity to rewrite it without the 0. Now we're getting close. Two more numbers on the variable side. What number is easier to eliminate using reverse PEMDAS? It tells us to, use it to eliminate the addition first. So we're going to subtract 8 to both sides. So we subtracted 8 to the left and to the right side. We simplify. We use some sort of identity, or in this case, the additive identity. And this has been the process this entire time. Now we've got 41. X is less than 41. Our last step is to divide both sides by 41. 
to get rid of the 41 that's on the variable side. And you can see after we 